Hi everyone, welcome to J Repairs channel. Today I'm gonna show you how to replace the brake pads on a 2002 Toyota Corolla. Stay tuned, comment, like and subscribe for more videos. The tools I'll be using for this job are all common tools. You're gonna need your jack and your jack stands, a half an inch ratchet set with a torque wrench, a couple of screwdrivers or a prying tool, a wire brush, and obviously your brake pads. You're also going to need a G-clamp to press the caliper piston inwards so it fits the new brake pads nicely. As per consumables, you're going to need brake cleaner, blue thread lock, and also some anti-seize copper paste. Okay, so let's get started. Because we want to replace the front brake pads, we're going to need to lift the front end off the ground. But before you do that, you want to break the wheel nuts free with the tire still on the ground. Otherwise, the wheel will just spin. Now we jack the car up, we place the stand, and we remove the wheel. And after removing the wheel, we then have the caliper, the caliper bracket, the knuckle back here, and the rotor, commonly known as brake disc. Now we use a half inch ratchet with a 12mm socket and we undo the two bolts holding the caliper in place. Now we use a screwdriver or prying tool to pry the caliper out and we try to find a place to put it, making sure the brake line doesn't get damaged. You can also use a bungee cord or cable ties to hang the caliper on the spring, but in my case I'm just gonna leave it where it is. Finally, we remove the brake pads. You may have to use a screwdriver to pry them out, but be very careful not to damage the disc. Now, as you can see, my brake pads don't look that bad, but the same wasn't happening on my other wheel, where the brake pads were almost coming to an end. This tells me that the calipers from both wheels are breaking unevenly. So I checked both kite pins and noticed that the bottom one was completely seized inside the housing. This obviously prevents the caliper piston from moving freely and the pads from breaking as they should. Now the top pin was actually in good shape, but the bottom one was completely seized inside the housing. So after some struggle, I managed to break the pin loose with a pair of pliers and a hammer and was finally able to pull it out of the housing. And as you can see, the pin is completely dry, its surface is a bit scratched, and the boot is ripped, allowing debris and water to make their way inside. So I then bought a new set of guide pins, two boots, and two bolts. And before we slide the guide pins into the housings, we need to apply a thick layer of silicon paste, in order to keep their movement nice and smooth. This will also allow the brake pads to work evenly and without seizing up in place again. Now using a screwdriver or a prying tool, we now pry both clips off. Then we start scrubbing all the dirty surfaces where the clips sit on. For this you can use a screwdriver or even a wire brush. We finally give the brake disc a good dose of brake cleaner in order to remove all the dust and debris stuck to its surfaces. Where the brake pad meets the clip, we will need to apply a very thin layer of anti-seize copper paste. This is to allow the pad to slide nicely and prevent it from seizing up. The same way, we can also apply copper paste on the brake pad itself, especially on its back surface where it will meet the caliper piston. We can now gently fit both brake pads in place and clean any excess copper paste we may find. Now we're gonna push the caliper piston inwards so it slides over the new brake pads nicely. But before we do that, we need to unscrew the brake fluid reservoir cap in order to release any back pressure created by the piston. But don't forget to screw the cap back on after the job is complete. 
And after unscrewing the cap, we can now place a piece of wood or even the old pad against the piston and use a G-clamp or a large pair of pliers to push the piston inwards until it is completely retracted. Ok, so now we remove the clamp, we slide the caliper over the new brake pads and we screw the bolts in place. But don't forget to spread some thread locker first. This is to prevent the bolts from coming loose due to vibration. The caliper bolts should be torqued to 34 Newton meters on this car. But because there is not enough space for me to use my torque wrench, I'll just tighten them by feel. Using only one hand, tight the bolts as much as you can and that should be close to the torque needed. Where the brake rotor touches the wheel, we will also spread some anti-seize copper paste to prevent excessive metal-to-metal -metal contact. We now fit the wheel back in place. We spread some thread lockers on the threads. And we hand screw the wheel nuts until they are just snug in place. But don't fully tight them just yet. Now we go ahead and remove the stands and we slowly lower the car just so the tires touch the ground. We can now finally torque the wheel nuts to 103 Newton meters. Finally we lower the car to the ground and we take it for a test drive. But before driving away Make sure you turn the engine on and pump the brakes a couple of times. You will feel the brake pedal a bit soft at first, but after a couple of pumps it will get harder, meaning the piston has finally touched the brake pads. Once it does, you're ready to go. And this is how you change the brake pads on your car. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing to the channel for more helpful videos just like this one.